Good morning from the outdoor kitchen on day nine. And I can't tell you how happy I am to see that clear blue sky. So yeah, it was a bit of rain the last couple of days and uh, that made it hard, but I hunkered down uh, to Gazero and um, things worked out all right. The bicycle now, by the way, has a name. I'm calling it the rocket. Yeah, I know it's not that original, but you'll see why in a bit. Quick little uh, post-mortem on the, uh, what I call the wet site. First of all, this is how much garbage I produced in two days of camping. And of course I'll be packing it all out. Um, yeah, okay, I produced more garbage with my bicycle and etc. All my gear which would be weird. Out. But still, I think there's a lesson in that. Second, uh, this is the tent site. And you can see this part here, this is where my head and shoulders were. It's pretty dry. And this part here is where I got some seepage uh, underneath the uh, ground sheet. So this is the high ground here. You look around, um, you know, no water would have been flowing to this point. This wasn't as quite high ground. There's a, you know, a bit of a, divot there or dent whatever you want to call it uh, but still it's pretty good so I'm applauding myself on site selection undeservedly but still all in all the rocket has performed pretty well on this trip there's the loose fork which was a problem right out of the gate right off the boat but what's concerning me most right now is this bend in the rear wheel Ironically, I got a new rear wheel specifically for this, a super tough rear wheel. So I'm kind of disappointed that this is the result. On the other hand, I wonder what my original wheel would have done. So, you know, can't have it both ways, I suppose. But at least I can try to keep it repaired and continue on. Hey, that's as good as it's going to get. Now, you notice here, it's not perfectly round anymore. Uh, but it's more or less going straight, more or less being the operative terms. The question is, will it get me there? And I think it'll get me there. Okay, just at the turnoff of the uh, Chalet Patat, odd name, is cache number three. And here we have the rocket slimmed down and ready to make some miles. Uh... <laughs> You can see why I call it the rocket now. I've been dropping stages all the way along here. Just so you know, it's not all glamour out here, sitting on top of the bike, breezing through forests. There's quite a bit of this. Hike a bike. The hills are real. I know, experienced mountain bikers probably have no problem, but I'm a flatlander. So I'm doing some hike-a-bike. Then I'm drinking some water. Okay, here's another road report for you. This is the side road to La Grotte Patate, or the Potato Caves. Uh, it's what I was expecting the main road to be. You see, it's really choppy, rough, sharp-edged surfaces. Uh, it's only three and a half kilometers. I'm not taking it because uh, I don't have time, but uh, that one would be a challenge. Meanwhile, this is our main road. And uh, as you can see, it looks like a pleasant country road. By comparison, uh, surface, not bad. Um, I'm still having no problems with, with the road at least. And uh, although there are, as you can see, hills. This is the Observation River and it's the uh, first little bit of the Hatacosti National Park that I've been into thus, thus far and I'm stopping here because I need some nice cold water. Just sitting here filtering my water, sort of like an enforced moment of zen. Boy, this is a pretty nice place to have a moment of zen. Yeah. 
These are the Vaurel Falls in Anticosti. Definitely worth seeing. And I might be able to walk in that canyon later on in this trip. I might not. But if you have the time, boy oh boy. I was leaning on my bike, heading up the hill in the sweltering sun. CPAC truck stopped to see how I was doing. Where are you going, he asked. Beta Latour. Where'd you start? Camping Wilcox. Think you're going to make it? Yep. You're tough, he said. Made my day. It was a pretty brutal hill getting up here. And actually about halfway up, um, three quarters of the way up, I had to stop and rest. Um, I took a break, I had one of my cliff spars, a fair amount of water, rested, I don't know for how long. Um, biking terms, that's called bonking. And basically what it means is I had gone as far as I could go with the energy that I had at the start of the day and, and that was it. No more. So if you're wondering what that was, uh, that was, um, Two packets of oatmeal, plus a similar amount of granola, Harvest Crunch to be precise. Um, and that took me 32 kilometers, and I, I guess about three liters of water as well. <laughs> uh, I'm on my fourth liter of water. Fortunately, there's lots of rivers around here, although there's no water here at the waterfall. Um, and uh, I'm doing a lot better, but I'm certainly going to take a longer break here. This is a pretty key turning point. Uh, I'm at kilometer 162. Notice the road's still fine. However, this is my road. Uh, looks better up there. Beta Latour, 15 kilometers. Here we go. It's super hard to get here, but as you approach Beta, La Beta Latour, it's, well, magical. <laughs> Tried to turn off the camera with my nose. <laughs> this was the longest ride of the trip, starting at Camping Wilcox here, ending at Beta Latour here. Some highlights, I left my cache here, near uh, Chalet uh, à la Patate. I thought I might stay there for a night. Here's the actual entrance to Grotte à la Patate. It's about a three kilometer road. Continuing along, we cross the Observation River, very nice river valley in there. Uh, then moving towards the Voreal Valley and some significant hills here, at least that's what I found, till we get to the falls right here. And then continuing along to get to Beta Latour, there's the road here. It's a more minor road, but still perfectly cyclable. We get to the bay itself. Here's the lake of the bay. The camping is over here by the swamp and the nice view and trails are up here. Well I made it to Bay de la Tour and I'm utterly alone here which means the nearest people are probably something like 60 kilometers away. And my main question right now is why is the bathhouse, which is great that it's here, but why is it half a kilometer away from the tent sites? <sighs> There is no explanation. Today's food is hearty beef stew again. This time I think I put in the proper amount of water. We'll see. Well, it took a ton of effort to get here. And of course I had to strip down the rocket to its bare bones. We'll come back to that tomorrow. 
right now, the struggle isn't over because of what I had to give up to get here. So I'm just in a sleeping bag on the temp floor. So I don't have any of my sleep supports with me. I don't even have my beloved pillow. So, and I don't have my CPAP nor the batteries, of course. And that saved a ton of weight, and that's probably what made it possible for me to do this, to get here to the end of the line. And it is the end of the line. So I feel really good about that. Not that I've seen very much of it. But uh, I might be in for a cold, hard night here. Although right now, it's feeling like it's not going to matter. I'm pretty tired. So that's it for today. See you tomorrow. As I lay there in the dark with images of the road flashing in front of me, thinking about the day that had passed, as the night faded into blackness, two loons serenaded me from the pond behind the tent, over and over and over, as the day disappeared. <laughs>